Sound is just one of the myriad of signals which animals use to send messages. Virtually all living creatures are able to communicate. But why are signals so important to animals? And what do their messages mean? Signals are vital from the moment of birth. As a female giraffe licks her baby for the first time, she becomes familiar with its individual scent. During these first moments of life, the calf is vulnerable and is entirely dependent on its mother for protection and food. It is essential that mother and offspring learn to identify each other within minutes of birth, if the youngster is to survive. Like all mammals, giraffes live in a world dominated by smell. The female learns to distinguish her offspring by its unique taste and odor. Giraffes are considered unusually silent creatures, but recent evidence suggests that mother and calf may communicate with infrasound low-frequency calls which cannot be heard by the human ear. Baby Nile crocodiles start to communicate with their mother even before they have hatched. A chorus of chirping calls attracts the female from up to 30 meters away. After 12 weeks, the young are ready to emerge, but remain imprisoned in their underground nest. The hatchlings often need the help of their mother to free them from their confinement. She delicately takes the young in her huge jaws and transports them to the river in a special pouch in the floor of her mouth. Without the protection of their mother, the hatchlings would face many predators on their journey. Once in the relative safety of the water, the croc family communicate with a soft contact call. Possibly the most extraordinary example of communication between mother and offspring is found in Mexican free-tailed bats that live in vast colonies of up to 40 million animals. Space is at a premium in the bat cave. Every square meter is lined with up to 3,000 pink hairless pups. Each female faces the difficult task of identifying her single baby amongst the seething crowd. Mother and baby use special calls to locate one another. The pup also emits a distinctive odor which the female smells carefully before accepting the youngster as her own. Bird chicks rely on visual signals to recognize their parents. During its first few hours of life, a signet imprints on its surroundings.
For a short time after hatching, the chick is sensitive to its environment and identifies the first large moving object it sees as its mother. This rapid recognition is essential to the survival of cygnets. Whilst their parents will protect them and lead them to suitable feeding areas, it is left to the chicks to keep up. Young animals use a battery of persuasive signals to demand food from their parents. The gaping beaks of hungry chicks trigger the automatic feeding response of adult birds. But all signals can lie. Cuckoo chicks are brood parasites who hatch in the nests of unsuspecting foster parents. The robin responds to the giant gape of the intruder, even though it has previously forced its own chick out of the nest. Yellow-billed hornbills raise their family inside a deep tree hole. For the first few weeks, the father is responsible for feeding the family. But because he cannot see how many chicks have hatched, he has a problem. How much food should he supply? Instead of responding to visual cues, the male carefully adjusts the number of insects he supplies according to the number of squeaking chicks he can hear. Hunting dog pups use special calls and visual signals to demand food from their relatives. When a hunting party returns, the pups adopt ritualized begging postures which encourage the adults to regurgitate their meat. The pups signal their hunger by nudging and even biting at the lips and legs of the adults. Food sharing cements bonds within the pack. It is such an important part of their communication that unlike most young animals, hunting dog pups only six weeks old will regurgitate meat for their family. Effective communication allows young animals to establish long-lasting relationships. Chimpanzees combine sounds, gestures and postures into a complex range of signals. Youngsters adopt a wide-mouthed grin known as the play face to reassure their companions that their lively actions are not aggressive. Excited screaming conveys their enjoyment. This is just one of 32 different sounds which chimps use to express their emotions. Young chimps must establish firm friendships because in the future, these relationships will determine their status as adults. Like humans, chimps are thought to be born with an innate set of signals which develop through social interaction. Their inherited vocal calls change over time, and it has even been suggested that chimpanzee groups from different areas adopt distinct regional accents. Young chimps live with their mother for up to seven years. She teaches her offspring how to crack nuts by demonstration. The youngster copies and learns, with varying success. Although chimps are known as the noisiest of the great apes, they are very sensitive to subtle signals. Touches, gestures, even slight eye movements transmit a constant stream of information to their companions.
Like chimps, gorillas use a range of sophisticated signals to maintain the status quo. They live in small social units led by a dominant silverback male. He is the noisiest character, making more than 90% of the vocalizations. Of all animals, primates have evolved the most complex set of facial muscles, which have transformed the face into a versatile communication tool. Gorillas use their expressive mouth, lips and eyes to indicate their changing mood. Gorillas are peaceful animals who spend most of their time quietly foraging. But when threatened, the group responds with excited chest-beating displays. Unlike gorillas, baboons live in large communities of up to 200 individuals. In these complex societies, everyone is constantly jostling for position. Females form the stable core of the group. They are ranked according to a strict order, which is passed on to their offspring. Even amongst the youngsters, there is a hierarchy, the youngest being the most dominant. Throughout their lives, baboons gain status through their relationships with others. The most important form of social interaction is grooming. The complex web of relationships can be deciphered by exactly who grooms whom. But rank is not always decided peacefully. What looks like a yawn is actually a threat gesture. Flashing eyelids and violent grunting indicate aggression. <laughs> to avoid serious injury, it is vital that the loser signals his submission quickly. <laughs> Wolves live in cooperative packs, which also rely on the maintenance of a strict group order. The exact meaning of their howl is not understood, but it is believed to be used to assemble the group for hunting. The pack is led by the alpha male, who asserts his dominance with a stiff threat posture. Ranking animals signal their submission by crouching and screaming. It's believed that their rigid pack order enables wolves to live and hunt successfully as a group. Communication is essential to animals who cooperate to find resources. In elephant society, a dominant female or matriarch leads the herd. Her remarkable ability to memorize the locations of food and water is essential to the herd's survival. The matriarch keeps in constant contact with all members of her group using a series of soft growls. Elephants are very tactile animals. During a greeting ceremony, their highly sensitive trunks are inserted into the mouths of their relatives for reassurance. 
In addition to calls used at close range, neighboring herds communicate using deep infrasonic rumbles, the upper frequencies of which can just be heard by the human ear. Water transmits sound even more effectively than air. Dolphins use high frequency calls known as signature whistles to identify other members of their pod. It is believed that dolphins live in communicating pods to increase their hunting success and to improve their defense against predation. But it's not only large mammals that have evolved sophisticated signals. Despite their apparent simplicity, bees are able to transmit complex messages to one another. As a worker bee returns from foraging, it retains detailed information on the location of good feeding areas. Once a bee is surrounded by other workers on the honeycomb, it begins an elaborate series of movements known as the waggle dance, which give the position of the pollen flower relative to the sun. The speed of the dance indicates the distance of the flower from the hive. The faster the loops, the further the flower. Honeybees are such efficient communicators that workers from a single colony may direct each other to as many as three million flowers in one day. Plants use scents and bright colors to attract insect pollinators. Surprisingly, most insects cannot see the color red. An ultraviolet camera reveals the unexpected identity of flowers. It is these signals which direct the insects to the pollen. Termites live in a world ruled by chemicals. A single queen governs the precise functioning of her colony. She is a grotesque, egg-laying machine who is attended by a constant stream of busy workers. They feed the queen with chemical information about the state of the colony. She responds to their messages by adjusting the number of offspring she produces. As the eggs are laid, the workers collect chemical commands from the queen. In this way, the queen acts like a giant control center which coordinates the activities of her minions. She manages her empire carefully, ensuring that she produces enough workers to maintain the colony and look after the new arrivals. This extraordinary communication system enables millions of blind individuals to function as one giant superorganism. Like termites, army ants are social insects who live in large cooperative societies. They leave distinct scent trails which lead swarms of as many as 150,000 raiders to their victims. Animals use signals not only to cooperate with friends, but also to defend against rivals. In a competitive world, communication allows animals to protect their precious resources from greedy neighbors.
Sound is an ideal signal for birds because it penetrates through thick vegetation, carries over long distances and can convey a wealth of information. But vocal communication has its drawbacks. Sounds are short-lived and are energetically expensive to produce. One of the most common territorial signals used by animals is scent marking. Being waste products, smells are extremely cheap to produce. They spread over large areas and remain active for a long time. In the forests of Madagascar, ring-tailed lemurs defend their territories with smell. Chemical communication is vital to the maintenance of ring-tail society. Individuals produce odorous fluids from a multitude of different scent glands. Conflict with neighboring troops is frequent. It is primarily the females that are responsible for defense, but males are also highly aggressive. They communicate with their black and white tails, using them to spread chemical messages through the air. They rub their tails against smelly glands on their wrists and then wag them at their opponents in what is appropriately called a stink fight. Excreta is a foul fact of life, but many resourceful animals utilize their waste products as signals. Male hippos produce copious quantities of pungent excrement, which is believed to be used to intimidate opponents and mark their territories against rivals. The individual who produces the largest quantities is superior to the other, less productive males. Scent marking is also very important in the territorial behavior of the big cats. Male lions form powerful coalitions in order to compete for ownership of a female pride. But they can only maintain dominance for two to three years and there is an ever-present risk of being overthrown by rivals. This male's urine will remain active for many days to warn intruders that the area is occupied. Lions also use vocal signals to advertise their presence. The full-throated, thunderous roar of a male carries more than eight kilometers across the savanna and is one of nature's most impressive sounds. calls inform other lions that the territory is claimed.
close range, lions use more subtle sounds to express their mood. Purring and humming signal contentment and are heard during affectionate interactions between pride members. Cubs learn the full range of vocal signals within their first month. Within the pride, it is the females who do the hunting. During the dry season, wildebeest migrate across the African savanna in their thousands. They produce secretions from their hooves, which help them to keep track of the animal in front. The distinctive grunting of the moving herd is a contact call emitted by the males. Wildebeest form large herds so there are more eyes to keep watch for predators and more chance to raise the alarm. One unlucky victim is singled out. Group communication allows the rest of the herd to escape. In a dangerous world, many animals seek safety in numbers. At the first sign of danger, flamingos take to the air. The birds use loud honking calls to activate the flock. Flamingos who are too distant to hear the alarm call flee in response to the sight of others on the wing. The spectacle created by so many birds makes it difficult for a predator to pick out a potential victim. In open water, Fish seek safety in swirling shoals. Fish detect each other's movements with pressure-sensitive cells running in lines along their bodies. Dwarf mongoose live in highly cooperative societies which use a stream of vocal signals to communicate. The approach of a predator provokes an excited exchange of alarm calls. Though the monitor could not take an adult, it could attack the juveniles hidden underground. On full alert, troop members emit a series of rapid panic calls. Mongoose use different warning signals for different predators. Other animals also use a variety of alarm calls. As they forage high in the canopy, shifark are constantly alert to danger. When they spot a predator on the forest floor, they inform their group with a specific signal which warns of danger from the ground.
the fossa is the largest land predator on Madagascar. It hunts lemurs by sight and smell and is an accomplished climber. In order to escape attack from a fossa, the lemurs must scatter high in the canopy. Their calls allow the troop to respond correctly to the emergency and stay one jump ahead of the hunter. But sounding the alarm is a dangerous task. African rock hyrax live in large colonies in steep mountainous terrain. The rocks are cool and the hyrax are particularly vulnerable to predation as they bask sluggishly in the early morning sun. A loud squeak alerts the group to an eagle soaring above, but attracts the predator's attention. Signaling can be a deadly operation and this prevents alarm signals from becoming too conspicuous. But some signals must be obvious to be effective. Poisonous animals use bold colors and patterns. Other animals avoid signaling altogether and attempt to become invisible. Predators use the same tricks. The strangest and most macabre form of camouflage is carried out by the African assassin bug. It covers its body with the carcasses of its victims in order to disguise its true identity. But whether an animal actively signals or not, its very presence can alert a predator. Blinded by nightfall, a rattlesnake can sense its victim by its body heat alone. A pair of temperature-sensitive organs concealed in pits between the snake's eyes and nostrils form a sensitive heat detector. Even though the mouse forages silently under the cover of darkness, the warmth of its blood transmits deadly information to the rattlesnake. The key goal for all adult animals is to reproduce. Attracting a suitable partner is difficult and effective signals are critical to success. Triggered by the lunar cycle, corals engage in a synchronized spawning which enable the static colonies to cross-fertilize. discharge chemical signals which coordinate the release of eggs and larvae into the ocean. Unlike corals, most animals face a tougher challenge and must seek out a partner in the wilderness. For most of the year, humpback whales are silent. But as the breeding season begins, the southern oceans are filled with exquisite music. His mournful calls can be heard by other whales up to 30 kilometers away. Once they have found each other, the male and female dive into the darkness to mate. Marine animals use a variety of subaqua signals to locate possible mates. Cuttlefish communicate with ever-changing colors. Their eyesight is sophisticated and they respond to complex visual patterns produced by pigments in the skin. Cuttlefish can transmit numerous different messages at once, 
and their signals are believed to be comparable to those of many birds and primates. Even simple organisms such as comb jellies can communicate. They release chemical attractants which are believed to initiate swarming behavior. Some creatures are able to generate their own light. The eerie glow of a firefly is produced by chemicals in its abdomen. Fireflies can identify a suitable mate by the quality of light they produce. An orange barred sulfur butterfly uses a different trick. Filmed under ultraviolet light, its drying wings reveal an unusual property. They flash like silver. The reflections are signals which allow them to recognize members of their own species. Monarch butterflies are one of the world's greatest travelers, migrating thousands of kilometers each year. In order to attract a mate, the females exude powerful chemicals known as pheromones, which males find irresistible. Unusually for butterflies, tactile signals are also used during courtship. Once the male has located a female, he performs a fluttering dance to stimulate her to mate. In courtship, males tend to be the flamboyant signalers. Females are the choosy sex. Since they generally invest more time and energy in the offspring than males, females are extremely selective in their choice of partner. The most bizarre signals of nature have evolved as a result. During the breeding season, male frigate birds inflate a scarlet throat pouch. This extraordinary adornment attracts the eyes of females. Females circle above to inspect the talent carefully. Unlike males, they do not mate every year, and so it is beneficial to be very choosy. Where there is fierce competition for partners, many species have evolved elaborate displays to outcompete their rivals. During the breeding season, Thomas's cob gather on traditional arenas known as lecking grounds. Here the males attempt to establish dominance over the prime positions. Females will only mate with males who occupy the most exclusive central territories. Competitors adopt upright postures to signal their superiority. If disputes cannot be resolved peacefully, violent fighting breaks out. The victor will mate with all the females that visit his territory, but he is constantly challenged and his days of dominance are numbered.
male elephant seals also face tough challenges in their battles for females. Each year, thousands of seals aggregate in vast rookeries to breed. The gigantic two and a half ton bulls are almost three times the size of the females. Their loud roars carry for up to a kilometer and signal dominance over their harem. But their claims do not go unchallenged. are bloody, but the rewards are high. A single winner, the beach master, will gain access to over a hundred females. The final critical step for the courting creature is to arouse their partner so that mating can take place. Greater crested grebes form monogamous pairs each year. The male and female birds have a long engagement, during which time they perform special courtship rituals. The most complex is the weed dance. The ceremony begins with mutual head shaking. The birds dive underwater to collect submerged weeds, which they present to each other. The grebe's peculiar display is designed to synchronize their readiness to mate. Some of the most humorous courtship displays are performed by the boobies. These seabirds have evolved brightly colored feet, which they use to woo their partners. The male and female parade across their territories and flaunt their brilliant webbed appendages at one another. The sky-pointing posture of the male indicates his desire to mate and is a signal which is thought to arouse the female. After such elaborate foreplay, the act of mating, which lasts a mere five to ten seconds, seems rather an anticlimax. However, their courtship displays will have maximized their chances of successful fertilization. For some animals, a cautious approach to a prospective partner is essential. A male giant tarantula detects a female in her burrow using specialized receptors on his legs. The tapping sound made by the male's feet attracts the female out of her burrow. The male gently strokes the female into a trance so he can transfer his sperm and fertilize her. This is a delicate and dangerous operation, taking him up to two hours. The stakes are high. If the female is unsure, she will kill him. 
Finding a new mate is a demanding task, and many animals remain faithful to their partner for life. <laughs> Albatross communicate their enduring devotion by beak tapping displays. Monogamy is common in birds, but rare in mammals. Siamangs are unusual amongst primates because they form permanent mating partnerships. The couples spend many hours engaged in playful acrobatics. Siamangs strengthen their relationship by singing a morning duet to defend their territories against neighboring pairs. Though humans have attempted to interpret nature's signals, there remain many unanswered questions about animal communication. As we stare into the cage of our closest relative, we wonder about their intelligence. Studies with chimps, dolphins, parrots, even bees have indicated they may demonstrate some linguistic ability but the evidence is inconclusive. So far, man alone is attributed with language. Indeed, this may be the key feature which separates man from beast. The human world looks, smells and sounds very different to the way it is perceived by any other species. As prisoners of our limited senses, we can only guess at the true complexity of animal communication.